Welcome back. Now in this video, the third part, we have already finished the various incisions given over the abdomen area in the second part A and part B. Now this is the third part and we are going to discuss uh, here uh, the various incisions that is used in cases of thoracic area. So this is the part three. Very quickly, we are just going through this. This uh, just focus on this thoracic area, the infraclavicular incision, median sternotomy, trap door, clamshell, Ivor Lewis, Mercedes bench, and in others, let's take uh, um, subareolar incision or uh, inframammary incision for breast, and uh, um, yes, there are other incisions also. We'll discuss. Let's go through the thoracic part and this you already know the mail ID, the web URL and then WhatsApp number and Instagram. Okay, let's start with the thorax. The first one is the infraclavicular incision. I'm just um, taking it as infraclavicular incision. Very important points. The infraclavicular incision basically here you can see this is the right clavicle and this one is the left clavicle and below this this is the incision given and this infraclavicular incision is usually required for subclavian exposure whenever we are having a patient who has sustained trauma to the subclavian vessels and we are suspecting subclavian uh, particle injury for gaining the proximal control uh, during this exposure, the subclavian artery exposure, we need this infraclavicular incision, right? So it is uh, made transversely through the skin and subcutaneous tissues inferior to the clavicle and it gives access to the subclavian vessels. Remember, if access to the distal subclavian artery is needed, we will require a supraclavicular incision, right? Sometimes. Then after this infraclavicular, the second uh, thoracic incision is median sternotomy incision. This median sternotomy incision is very commonly used for uh, open heart surgery. And uh, the important thing is, uh, there, are another, there is another procedure that is known as anterolateral thoracotomy. And this one is median sternotomy. We are opening the thorax through the mid plane from here. And sometimes there is anterior lateral thoracotomy also. So whenever we are going to compare these two procedures, this median sternotomy incision is obviously taking more time. It requires more time, right? Whenever it is compared to anterior lateral thoracotomy, right? Uh, the various indications for this median sternotomy, uh, whenever there is a superior mediastinum hematoma during uh, after the trauma, or whenever there is precordial stab injury and in that case we want to take control for bleeding vessels directly so use median sternotomy instead of any other thoracic incision and whenever uh, sometimes this median sternotomy is also done as a part of neck exploration when we are doing whenever we are doing neck exploration like in case of thymus surgery right and then it could be a part of thoracolaparotomy also sometimes okay where to avoid this median sternotomy whenever we want to uh, go for this emergency department thoracotomy this is an uh, very uh, emergency this urgent procedure for the life-saving procedure and that's why as this median sternotomy is taking more time so please avoid it this median sternotomy should not be used for emergency department thoracotomy. And it should not be used for precordial firearm injury also, as well as whenever there is tracheobronchial injury. Right? Because these, these things, they require very fast management. Right? This sternotomy is a vertical incision. As we have discussed, there are three types of incision, vertical, horizontal, and oblique. And this is a vertical incision over sternum. 
and it is this is incision is used to as, access the mediastinum uh, the pleural cavity the aorta and various branches of aorta towards the head and upper extremities as well as the epigastric region so these can be assessed through this median stenotomy incision and this is also most commonly employed incision for open heart surgery after this median stenotomy next incision is trap door incision this trap door incision is basically it looks like this one here you can see the, these are clavicles and the first upper one then the this median stenotomy then the second one so basically this trap door incision is a combination of three incisions right the first one this one this one is basically a transverse collar incision then this one is median stenotomy here and finally this one is extension of this lower end of median stenotomy laterally that is thoracotomy below the pectoralis majors one of the indication could be in the management of let's say pancos tumor and you all of must be knowing this what is this pancos tumor right so during the management of pancos tumor yes this trap door incision could be a choice of incision right then trap door incision is a combination of collar incision is stenotomy and a laterally extended this is uh, extended thoracotomy uh, from the inferior aspect of stenotomy below the pectoral muscles and sometimes this incision can be used rarely to control bleeding from penetrating trauma to zone 3 of the neck and for aortic arch aneurysm also right so zone 3 of the neck penetrating trauma if bleeding is there to control it trap door incision sometimes required and for aortic arch aneurysm the trap door incision is commonly used another indication is pancos tumor so these were the indications for trap door incision and trap door incision basically it opens a door to what are the things the pleural space the mediastinum the cervical vasculature and the heart the three incisions are used carefully due to very good vascular supply of the underlying structures and there are various nerves running along the anterior chest wall so it should be used very cautiously the blade used in while making the trap door incision it should be handled with care as if you are uh, if it is too deep while putting this incision then the lung aorta or sometimes other major vascular structures may be injured leading to torrential hemorrhage right so trap door incision after this trap door incision the clamshell incision is uh, another incision given over the thoracic area here you can see almost the double bilateral thoracotomy has been done and this incision is somewhat like this just below the level of these nipples usually and the important thing is while doing this clamshell incision avoid injuring the breast tissue of a female patient right most commonly this clamshell incision is extended from left anterior lateral thoracotomy means we have done this left anterior lateral thoracotomy if still some indication is there then again extend it towards the right side and what are the things this is going to give the exposure of the good exposure for both the lung hilum the the heart and the descending aorta whereas at the same time this clamshell incision is unsuitable for superior mediastinum injury trachea and other great vessels right in that case yes we can go for either uh, median stenotomy or trap door incision right if required and please remember median stenotomy is a part of the second incision of trap door incision which is a combination of three incisions right so avoid cutting breast tissue in females while placing this clamshell incision already told you 
The clamshell incision is a large transverse incision that spans across the entire chest wall, right? Also known as bilateral thoracotomy. And this clamshell is basically used during massive chest trauma or whenever a patient is undergoing lung transplant or whenever we are doing a resection of tumors in the chest. This clamshell incision is used. These are the indications. In clamshell, this incision extends through the sternum between the fourth and fifth ribs bilaterally, means through the fourth intercostal space, and it extends up to the mid axillary line. Right? The mammary vessels and intercostal muscles with associated intercostal nerves and vessels obviously they are going to be damaged, so interrupted while placing this clamshell incision. One of the disadvantages. The next incision in this thoracic area is thoracoabdominal or Ivor Levis incision. This Ivor Levis incision is basically, you can see, look like this one. This is umbilicus. This is umbilicus. A vertical incision here, you can see, over the abdomen. Then it goes just like thoracotomy, the anterior thoracotomy. In extension right so this is known as Ivor Levis incision this Ivor Levis incision is used for tumors of distal esophagus and gastroesophageal junction the advantage of this Ivor Levis incision is that it is giving a very wide exposure uh, for the thoracic cavity as well as the abdominal cavity and uh, through this incision the two field lymphadenectomy is possible and while this uh, Ivor Levis esophagectomy we are going for through this incision, there is low leak rate in Ivor Levis esophagectomy and there is less incidence of recurrent laryngeal nerve injury whenever we are comparing it with a transhiatal esophagectomy. Transhiatal esophagectomy is basically a multi stage, let's say four stage procedure, whereas this. Ivor Levis esophagectomy is a two stage procedure. Right? So, Ivor Levis incision is used for this esophagus tumors for esophagectomy. There is a unique incision connecting pleural cavity and peritoneal cavity, and there is exposure to lateral organs as well, retroperitoneal, pleural space, and distal esophagus. Whenever we have applied it on the right side, this right sided incisions, there is exposure to hepatic region as well as the right kidney. And whenever this is situated in the, on the left side, there is exposure for stomach and distal esophagus. Patient is placed with their abdomen tilted 45 degrees to 45 degrees from horizontal. This abdomen is tilted and thorax is twisted into completely lateral position. So lateral position of the thorax with 45 degrees from horizontal abdomen is there and it exposes the abdomen as well as the lateral thoracic region. A vertical incision through left or right upper quadrant to initiate with depending on the type of procedure or depending on the patient's indication whether the right side or left side then we are going to explore the abdominal contents first and incision is extended through 8th intercostal space 8th intercostal space from medial to lateral for pleural exposure so we are going to expose the abdomen first followed by pleural cavity exposure in this incision it will disrupt this incision is going to disrupt the rectus abdominis and various oblique muscles whenever we are placing it laterally as well as the transverse abdominis thoracic end of this incision it extends through the intercostals and latissimus dorsi muscle and once the thoracic cavity is entered the lung we are going to deflate the lung is deflated right after entering the thoracic cavity the important thing is while placing the abdominal and thoracic part of this thoracoabdominal liver levis incision the two incisions should meet at a sharp angle 
wire sharp angle for cleaner closure and take care of this thoraco dorsal artery which is a, a blood supply for latissimus dorsi and this blood supply may be interrupted when during the pleural incision laterally whenever we are extending it laterally and abdominal incision could lead to disruption in superior epigastric branches right so even the abdominal incision part of the incision is going to disrupt it superior epigastric branches and at the same time this thoracic dorsal artery may be damaged while extension towards the pleural side right so after this ivor lewis incision another one is mercedes benz incision Mercedes Benz logo. You must remember this. This is a, probably a somewhat similar to that logo. Mercedes Benz incision. This is basically here. If you can see up to this part, this is basically a roof top or gable modification or chevron incision, right? If we are extending again through the zipu sternum in the midline here, this becomes Mercedes Benz. Clear? so it could be a modification of roof top or double cocker incision or extension of chevron incision towards the zipus sternum whatever you say this is incision a modification on the chevron incision it is a classic chevron with a vertical incision that extends through zipoid and sternum and basically this mercedes benz incision is used in liver transplants or any other epigastric pathology that needs adequate exposure for debulking or total removal of that particular organ so that is all in thoracic area so we have covered the abdominal incisions as well as the thoracic incision till this video and next video will discuss the various incisions of the neck very interesting topic so let's meet you there till then bye bye Take care.